The concept of layers is not a difficult concept to understand. In Photoshop, pictures in the form of layers are essentially stacked on top of each other and then it's up to you to determine how the layer above and the layer below interact with each other. If that means that you erased a large portion of the upper layers that you could see through to the bottom layer, that's one way. Sometimes you want to pull color from one layer into another so you can change what's called the blending mode. We're going to talk about all these things briefly today, but what I do want to show you is a very simple demonstration about how layers work. Okay, and we're going to start by doing what's called a facial transplant or a face swap. And we're going to try and go through this a little bit quickly, but I'm going to walk you through as we go. So we're going to start by learning how to open a file. Okay, I already have my files downloaded. They're on a folder on my desktop, so I'm going to go looking for them. File open through the menu. Command O on a Mac, Control O on a PC. We're going to click open. And I already have my folder here and I'm looking for, and yes, I bet you can already tell where we're going with this. We're making a Hunger Games fan fiction that should never be. Okay, we're going to start with a picture of Josh here, Josh Hutcherson. If anybody's a fan, I'm truly sorry. We're going to do some things today that may make it difficult to sleep tonight. But what I'm going to show you here is that when we bring in the file, the first thing is that it does technically exist on its own layer, but that layer is called a background. And background means bottom of the stack. You can't put anything underneath the background. Therefore, um, if I were to try to erase some of the background from here, it's not going to become transparent. It's just going to show whatever color is selected as the background color here in my color picker. So as a demonstration, it's going to erase to white instead of erasing to transparency. In order to get it to erase the transparency, which is generally speaking the goal in Photoshop is to always work with transparency and be able to interact with each other, um, you're going to double click on the background. And by double clicking on the background, you can turn it into a layer. Now if I go back and I erase over this again, look at that. Now it shows a checkerboard pattern. Now the checkerboard pattern is Photoshop's way of telling you that you're looking at nothing. There's no color there at all. It's completely transparent. If I were to put another picture underneath Josh and move it to this upper right hand corner, you would be able to see through his picture and to this spot underneath that I've just erased. The next step that we're going to do here is we're going to open up Jennifer's picture. I'm going to use her picture as the donor body and I'm going to put Josh's face onto her. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use a selection tool. Now the selection tools, primarily, there's three of them, but in this I'm only going to talk briefly about these two. This is your geometric selection tool, and this will allow you to make either square or rectangular selections or circular selections. These two also exist, but they're not very useful. They select one row of pixels, which is tiny and not very useful. Uh, the other option is your freeform selection tools, which are the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to use, for simplicity's sake, just a standard rectangular marquee tool, which will allow me to make a square selection. And I'm going to select, since he has a rather square face, I'm going to select this, and click and drag, and let go. And now you'll see what we call the marching ants, which is this black and white border that kind of crawls around the selection. Everything inside this box is now selected. All those pixels are inside that selection's boundary. If I were to change to my move tool at the top of my toolbar, and now I can click and drag with my move tool, and I can actually put him elsewhere on this picture. But we both know the goal is not to exist inside this picture, it's to end up over here. So what we're going to do, it's still selected, so we're just going to go edit, copy, and it's just copying everything inside that selection. We're going to bring it over here, and we are going to paste it. And now I have Josh's gigantic face on his own layer on Jennifer's body. Now these two sizes are clearly not compatible. We are going to have to resize him. 
but I'm never going to get the size right unless I can sort of see and compare between his face and her face to make sure that they line up more or less correctly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is another layer trick, which is I'm going to adjust how transparent this layer is. So here's my Josh layer, and I am going to change the opacity, which is right here, and I'm going to change it from 100%, and I'm going to bring it all the way down to about 45%. This allows me to see through his picture to her face, but I can still pretty much make out the difference between each of them. So the next thing that you'll notice is that his face is significantly larger than her face. Therefore, the next step is we are going to have to scale him down. And that's why we made this transparent in the first place. As we scale, we can see when his eyes and his nose and his mouth are roughly the same size as hers so that we know that we're dropping a reasonably similar sized face onto hers. So we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Scale. This brings up the first thing that you're going to see a lot of in this program, and that is the transformation handles or the resize handles. You have them at every vertex, so you have one here in each corner. You also have them in between each corner, which I don't recommend using because you can grab one of these like this and you can make him ridiculously misshapen and extremely thin by accident and that essentially ruins his proportions. If I were to grab from a corner and hold down the shift key, those proportions will not change which is extremely useful if you're trying to maintain some form of realism for what you're doing. You don't accidentally distort and suspend disbelief on something that you're trying to accomplish. So I'm starting to shrink him down, but I don't know if I've got it quite right yet. So now I'm going to move him. I'm letting go of the shift key. I'm going to move him and I'm going to line up the nose. The nose lines up, the eyes more or less. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. He does have a bigger face than hers. And now I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit vertically and prepare yourselves for what may be a lifetime of therapy and counseling. As we approve the transformation, we're going to bring the opacity back up to 100%. And wow, look at that. The jawline even lines up really well. Get ready for this. We are going to take the eraser tool and the eraser tool now will obliterate parts of his face and because the brush has been set to have no hardness which means it'll have a very soft edge it means that the color of his skin and the color of her skin will blend together observe I'm gonna go around real nice and easy make sure that her hairstyle stays in one piece and anybody else notice that he kinda looks like Orlando Bloom like Legolas from Lord of the Rings that is frightening. And I'm just going to erase a little bit more. And now you can see how layers work and interact with each other. 